Սելի բարեկամներ անցյալ ամիս նյոր կում էր գտնվում Հայաստանում ամերիկայի միացալ նհանգների դեսպան ջան հվրնը, որը նյոր կում մի քանի հանդիպումներ ունեցավ։ Այս ժմ սիրո ուզում եմ ձեզ ներկայացնել մեր պատրաստածակ The gathering was one of several appearances by the ambassador before Armenian audiences as part of listening tour that featured meeting with diaspora in the cities across the United States. The meeting was organized by the Diocese of East Coast and a fund for Armenian relief. Other organizations participating in realizing this town hall meeting included the AGBU, Knights and Daughters of Vartan, Armenian Student Association, Armenian Assembly of America, Tekeyan Cultural Association, Hamasgain Armenian Educational and Cultural Society, Constantinople Armenian Relief Society, Yesayan Kentronakan Alumni, Tabrevank Alumni, and Armenian American Support and Educational Center. FAR Chairman Randy Sapagulian introduced Ambassador Heffern to the crowd. After being nominated in May 18, 2011 by the United States President Barack Obama, Heffern was confirmed by the U.S. Senate on September 26 and sworn as an ambassador on October 6 of the same year. In his presentation, ambassadors spoke about the efforts of trying to help Armenians succeed as a democratic, prosperous, and secure country. So what is, what is our mission statement? What are we trying to do in Armenia? Try to make a, a clear statement of, of our goals, and our goals are pretty simple. Help Armenia succeed help Armenia succeed as a democratic, prosperous, secure country. I mean, easy to say, not so easy to do sometimes, but it's easy to say and it's a clear message. And, and that's my main message today, that that's our, our mission statement in Armenia. He also underlined the U.S. policy of pulling Armenia to the West by implementing internal changes, such as keeping the private sector separate from politics and helping key people and policymakers adopt laws and regulations consistent with democratic ethics. He also reaffirmed U.S. commitment to free and fair democratic elections in Armenia, with all candidates having access to media, along with healthy political competition. And our message has been that to have free and fair elections, you need a level playing field. You need a level playing field. All the parties, all the candidates, all the points of view uh, need to uh, have equal access to the media. Everybody needs to play by the same rules. You need to have political competition. Political competition is a good thing, not a bad thing. Competition is a good thing. And it will help Armenia's democracy mature. And that, those are the messages that we've given uh, at every level uh, over the course of this last year. Mr. Heffern also spoke about economical ties between United States and Armenia. The U.S. investment in Armenia is high quality investment. It might not be number one. We might not be number one in terms of quantity. Other countries have invested more in Armenia, but U.S. investment is high quality because it's transformative. U.S. investment is helping, trans helping to transform Armenia into a 21st century knowledge-based economy, which of course is exactly what Armenia needs. It benefits from and it takes advantage of Armenia's greatest strength, which as you all know is, is its talented uh, and uh, talented and creative uh, people are Armenia's major, ma major strength, and that's what U.S. investment does. It takes advantage of that investment. Following his presentation took place Q&A with the audience. Among the questions asked was a question about U.S. position regarding recognition of Armenian genocide, to which Mr. Ambassador replied. Let me just say one thing. Uh, the president, uh, presidential statement on Remembrance Day is a strong statement. It acknowledges the facts. 1.5 million Armenians massacred and marched to their deaths in one of the worst atrocities of the 20th century. It acknowledges the facts. How we characterize, how the United States government characterizes those terrible events is a policy decision made at the highest level by our elected officials in Washington. It's not made by Embassy Yerevan. So what I can assure you tonight is that I will listen, I will learn, and I will report back to Washington, to my superiors, to those policymakers, uh, what I hear from you tonight on this and every other subject, as I have uh, learned uh, on uh, in every other previous meeting. So I look forward to our discussion on this uh, on this and other topics uh, tonight.
Voice of Armenians TV New York asked Ambassador about improved U.S.-Azerbaijan relationships despite Azerbaijan's long track record of human rights violations and heavy dictatorship where power is transferred from father to son and the president is appointed for life. We also asked Ambassador the reasons behind refusing to recognize legitimacy of Nagorno-Karabakh government, even though it is a true model of democracy in the region. To these questions, Ambassador replied. Azerbaijan NK, hike your question. Again, the, the idea here is, is to have a negotiating process, a negotiating process that results in a, a, a peaceful agreement that the two parties agree to. Now that's hard to do. Right now everything is zero sum and there's no trust. It's a very difficult prospect of, to how we, what's going to be the final status of NK. That's going to come about through a negotiating process, uh, which I think is going to take some time, uh, to, that, the, that the two parties are going to agree to. The only alternative to that is for the, for the, for the big guys to impose a solution. And I'm not sure uh, that's a very hopeful, uh, very hopeful uh, way to proceed. On Azerbaijan's human rights problems, absolutely. We're, we, our human rights report is just full of criticisms of all, all manner of abuses. Uh, much stronger uh, language in the Azerbaijan human rights report, uh, certainly than Armenia's. Armenia's situation has many problems as there are in Armenia. You're right, Azerbaijan has many, many more uh, human, rights, human rights issues than Armenia does. And our human rights report, our bilateral dialogue, uh, our, uh, our, our, our communication with them, criticism of them, public and private, demonstrates how we feel about that. Thanking the ambassador and his wife, Archbishop Khajak Barsamian paid tribute to the great efforts that Armenian Americans have made to support a free Armenian homeland. Considering that recently a convicted murderer was welcomed to Azerbaijan as a national hero, how do you see a conflict of Nagorno-Karabakh being solved? What would be a solution that would satisfy both parties? We have a negotiating process ongoing. Uh, there's three co-chairs, the United States, Russia, and, uh, and France are the co-chairs of this process. It's part of the OSCE, it's part of an international uh, security framework, a European security framework. Uh, and we're going to continue. We're going to continue at it. Both parties are back at the table. Both parties are back at the table. We've had a couple of meetings, and so the idea is to keep everybody at the table. Continue to have them talk. They offer ideas. We've offered a number of different kinds of documents, different formulations, to try to get them to get them an agreement. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to keep at it. We're going to keep pushing them to be creative. But as I said in my, in my remarks, uh, they're going to have to come up with a solution themselves. They are going to have to reach a, an agreement that both sides can accept. And that's what's the hard part. Right now, it's, it's a zero sum. Uh, they both look at it in a zero sum way. And, and we're hopeful that over time, there can be a process that will build a little trust. The Sabrov affair was a big problem and, and was very detrimental to that trust. Uh, you know that. Uh, we've made that very clear in public statements. But the idea is to continue the process. Be patient, uh, continue to urge them and push them to find creative solutions uh, so that they can find a peaceful solution that they both can accept. And on a lighter note, what do you love most about Armenia? Let's say when your time comes to step down as an ambassador to Armenia, what would you miss the most? What I, what I will miss the most is the hospitality of the Armenian people. I've been in a lot of countries. I've been doing this for 30 years. And what Libby and I have, have, have experienced in Armenia, we've never experienced in any other country in terms of of, of talented people who, who want to share with everybody everything that they have, uh, share their talents. We've been to musical performances everywhere. Uh, we've been to festivals all over the country. There's a berry festival in Baird and a Horovats festival in Oktala and a, a wine festival in Areni. Uh, just the sharing of, the, of, of their talents and of their time and of, the, of, of what they have. And of course, I understand that there's very few things you can publicly say about the Armenian issue of Armenian genocide. Of course, we're approaching the 100 years milestone, or rather grim milestone. Are you optimistic that at one point Armenian people will receive the justice that is so, so long due? The statement that President Obama makes made in, uh, on Remembrance Day is a strong statement. He acknowledges the facts of uh, 1.5 million Armenians massacred and marched to their death in one of the worst atrocities of the 20th century. And that's the, that's the U.S. government statement. It's made at the, the decision on how we characterize those terrible events is made at the highest level uh, by our elected officials in Washington. And I will continue to follow, uh, I will continue to follow the, the policy line that they, that they provide me on this issue. 
And finally, are you optimistic about the future of Armenia? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what makes you optimistic? What makes me optimistic is, is, is one, the talents of the people, two, the success of, indi of industries, uh, sectors like the IT, computer sector, where their talented people are, are being showcased, where they're finding, where we're finding good partners, U.S. companies are finding great partners. Uh, I think Armenia's future is, is as a knowledge-based economy. Israel and Singapore can do it. Why can't Armenia? Uh, it, and so I think that's the future of Armenia is its talented people. And that's why I'm optimistic about their future. Mr. Ambassador, thank right, you so I, thank much. You.